Hello, welcome to Present Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 10, F statement in C sharp. F statement is actually a conditional statement. In C sharp, there are two types of conditional statements, F statement and switch statement. In this session, we'll talk about F statement. In the next module, we'll talk about switch statement. So in this session, we'll be learning about if statement, if else statement, and the difference between double ampersand and its counterpart single ampersand, and the difference between double pipe and a single pipe. Let's look at a demo. Now, to understand the if statement, let's write a simple C sharp program. I want the user to enter a number, and I want to decide, okay, is the number one, two, or three, using a simple if statement. Okay. So first I need to prompt the user to enter his number and to do that console.write line. So prompt the user to enter his number. So please enter a number. So the user now will enter a number. We need to read that from the console. So console.read line. And if you observe, read line method reads the entered number in the string format. Okay. Now, once we read the number from the console, we need to assign it to an integer variable. Int, let's say, user number equals. But however, we will get a compiler e error here because read line returns the number in the string format, but here the data type is integer. So, string cannot be implicitly converted to type integer. If you're not sure about what is an implicit and explicit conversion, please refer to my tutorial on data type conversions. So now we need to convert the string format into an integer format. Okay, and to do that, we can use the parse method. So int.parse. So what does this parse method do? It takes the string and converts that to integer. Since we are expecting an integer to be entered by the user, So once we have the user number, we can now compare. So if user number is equal to 1, then we know that it's 1. So we can safely print the message, console.write line, your number is 1. Your number is 1. So let's analyze how this if block works. Okay, so first, it comes here. An F statement will need to have a Boolean expression. Okay, and this expression must evaluate to a true or false. If this expression evaluates to true, then this block of code is executed. Otherwise, it's not. Okay, so if the user has entered one, so let's go ahead and run this program. So it's asking the user to enter a number. So now if I go ahead and enter 1 and press enter look at this your number is 1 okay because 1 is equal to 1 this expression has turned to be true so this line got executed okay let's more make this program a slightly bigger one okay so if user number equal to 2 and if user number equal to 3 so if user number is 2, we want to say it's 2. On the other hand, if it's 3, we want to say it's 3. All right. So now, let's go ahead and run this. So please enter a number. Now, instead of entering 1, 2, or 3, I'm going to enter 10. And if I press enter, look at this. There's no output. It's not telling me anything. Okay. So that's because, look at this. We enter 10, so into user number we have that value 10. Is 10 equal to 1? False. So this is kept. Similarly, 10 is equal to 2. False. This is kept. 10 is equal to 3. False. This is also kept. And after that, we don't have anything. It just terminates the program. So what I want this program to do is if the user has not entered any number between 1, 2, and 3, if he has entered any other number apart from these three numbers, I want a message on the screen saying that your number is not between 1, 2, and 3. So how do we do that? Have another if block. So if user number not equal to 1 and 
and user number not equal to 2 and user number not equal to 3. So basically what we are determining here is that if the user number is not 1, 2 and 3, then we want to print a message saying console.write line your number is not between 1, 2 and 3. Number is not between 1 and 3. Okay, so what's going to happen if somebody enters number 5, all these conditions will become false. It comes here. Okay, is user number 5 not equal to 1? True. 5 not equal to 2? True. 5 not equal to 3? 3. So if all of these conditions, see, in this F block, we have multiple Boolean expressions. For this block of code to be executed, all these conditions must be true. Even if one of the conditions is false, then this block of code will not be executed. Okay? So this is a pretty simple program. But then this program is slightly inefficient because look at this. If you look at these conditions, all of them are mutually exclusive. In the sense, if this number is 1, it cannot be 2, it cannot be 3, and it cannot be this. Okay? So in that case, Instead of using if, 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 you can make use of else if. Because that will make your program much more, uh, you know, faster. Because here, even if the number is 1, okay, it checks this condition, 1 is equal to 1, your number is 1, it prints that, but it checks this condition again, it checks this condition again, and it checks these conditions again. Okay, now this is extra processing, this isn't required. Because if the number is 1, we know that it cannot be 2, it cannot be 3, or any of these conditions. You know, it wouldn't satisfy that. So, the same program, we can actually make it slightly efficient by using a variation of if statement. So, if, else if. So, what's going to happen here? Let's copy that. And finally, you can just say else. So what's going to happen? Now, if this condition is true, then it doesn't bother to do any of this. It will directly come here. So it has saved us some time in terms of processing. So if true, execute this. If this is not true, only then it will come here. And this checks this. And if it is true then it prints this line and then skips the rest of the instructions so the name itself says if do this else if do this okay and obviously you don't need to have these conditions because if it's not one two or three even without checking the condition you can just print there is no need of any condition in else in fact you cannot have that the compiler will raise that as an error Okay, now if you run the program, it's going to work in the same way, except that it's going to be a little more efficient right now. Let's say, for example, I enter 5, your number is not between 1 and 3. Obviously, 5 is number not between 1 and 3. Okay, so that's a simple, you know, if statement. You can have a simple if statement, you can have if, else if, and an optional else statement as well and then within the single if statement you can have multiple conditions as well separated by ampersands or or symbols let's say for example i ask the user to enter a number if the number is you know 10 or 20 then i want to say your number is 10 or 20 so how do i do that if user number is equal to 10 or user number is equal to 20 so this is an OR condition now if if multiple boolean expressions are separated by OR then if any one of the conditions is true then this block of code you know the statements that follow the IF condition gets executed so we can say console.write line Your number is 10 
or 20 else you can do whatever you want if the number is 10 or 20 you know if any of these conditions are satisfied the number is you know this piece of code is executed otherwise this piece of code is executed okay on the other hand you can also have single pipe symbol so if you look at this you know for and you can either use double ampersand or single ampersand for or you can use double pipe symbol or single pipe symbol so what's the difference between these two actually if it's double pipe you know whether if it is double pipe or single pipe okay both any one of if any one of the conditions is true then this piece of code is executed but the difference is if it is double pipe and if this if the first condition becomes true it doesn't bother to check the second condition because if one of the conditions is true that's enough for this piece of code to be executed but whereas if it's a single pipe you know even if this condition is true the compiler I mean the runtime will go ahead and check this condition as well so if it's a single pipe it checks both the conditions always but if it's a, if it's say double pipe then if the first condition is already true then it doesn't bother checking the other condition it checks the second condition only if the first condition is not true okay so obviously double pipe will be much faster in some scenarios where the first condition is true that's why I always use double pipe and similarly double ampersand the difference between double ampersand and single ampersand if it's double ampersand you know for the piece of code for example if I say double ampersand for this piece of code to be executed this condition needs to be true and this condition needs to be true let's say if this condition is false already there's no point in checking this condition because anyway the runtime will skip executing this because this is already false so that's what single I mean double ampersand does if this condition is false it doesn't even bother to check this and goes to the else part whereas if it is single ampersand even if this condition is false it will check this condition and then goes to here and then goes here so obviously the single ampersand will check all the conditions whereas you know the double ampersand will check you know the next condition only if the first condition is true so that way that's why this double ampersand and double pipe symbols are together sometimes called as short circuit operators because they don't bother to check all the expressions involved in a boolean in, a, in, a, in an if or an else block you know all the time that's why they give us a little performance benefit so I suggest use you know double ampersand and double pipe wherever you have to use and or or conditions so so we have to sum up we have seen the if statement we have seen how if else statement works we have also seen the difference between um, double ampersand and single ampersand and similarly we have seen the difference between double pipe and single pipe that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day